Grace and peace to you, friends, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to this worship opportunity here at Hillsborough Presbyterian Church. We're so glad that you're connecting with us, whoever you are, wherever you're tuning in from. Your presence and our worship makes it all the better. I'm Alex Fisher. I'm the pastor here. If you're watching this, I presume that you know we are not worshiping in our sanctuary this morning. We are actually worshiping just down the road at New Hope Camp and Conference Center, one of our partners in ministry. And because we are outside and it is camp, our electricity and technology capabilities are limited. But I thought I would record this video for whoever is not able to make it, whoever doesn't feel comfortable making it with us. And so this will be a somewhat shorter worship service where there'll be some prayer, we'll read scripture together, I'll offer a message, and then we will go on our way to love and serve the Lord out in the world. So with that being said, I invite you to please join me for prayer as we prepare to hear scripture. God, we thank you so much for this opportunity to be in your presence, to attune ourselves to your spirit. Please quiet our hearts and our minds. Help us to hear your still, soft voice whispering to us, reminding us of hope and forgiveness and peace, the things that are truly steadfast, the things that will last in this world. Illuminate us to what your spirit is saying to the words of your scripture we are about to hear. We pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Mark 13. We are continuing our journey in Mark until Advent in a couple of weeks, if you can believe it. So hear these words from Jesus. As Jesus left the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Teacher, look what awesome stones and buildings. Jesus responded, Do you see these enormous buildings? Not even one stone will be left upon another. All will be demolished. Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives across from the temple. James, Peter, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things happen? What sign will show that all these things are about to come to an end? Jesus said, watch out, that no one deceives you. Many people will come in my name saying, I'm the one. They will deceive many people. When you hear of wars and reports of wars, don't be alarmed. These things must happen. But this isn't the end yet. Nations and kingdoms will fight against each other. There will be earthquakes and famines in all sorts of places. These things are just the beginning of the sufferings associated with the end. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. That's kind of a frightening passage, isn't it? It's really strange overall, especially the rest of the chapter. All of Mark 13 is known as a little apocalypse. When I was a kid, I was terrified of the idea of the apocalypse, the end times. I don't remember where I first heard about it, but I remember the messaging about it came from a lot of different places. I used to watch a show called Unsolved Mysteries hosted by Robert Stack. Maybe you've seen it. Maybe you've seen the recent reboot on Netflix. These were often stories about missing persons cases with dramatic reenactments and interviews with the actual people involved. But sometimes they delved into stranger territory like Bigfoot, aliens, ghosts, and the end times. I learned about people who believe the Bible is a code to be ciphered that would tell us exactly when the end times would come. Around town, I would see preachers on street corners carrying signs, holding megaphones, yelling about how the end was near. We better repent or we would be in danger of hellfire. I remember even a few big ad campaigns with specific dates and years advertising when the end would be. Even just turning to the back of a Bible, thumbing through the book of Revelation, I would be terrified. Dragons, 
lakes of fire catastrophes, passages like this one in Mark where Jesus describes these awful happenings. Thankfully, I was raised in a family that didn't exactly buy into the sensational readings of those passages. And I was in a church community that didn't endorse them either, at least most of the members. I realized eventually those types of interpretations didn't really hold water. They were actually missing the point. But fortunately, there are plenty of other people who do buy into it and are worried and afraid. Some churches and pastors play on that fear, and they base their entire ministries on warning and preparing people for the end times. I won't name names, but they really get under my skin. One pastor in particular sells buckets of food to his television viewers so they can stock up their apocalypse bunkers, as if they can survive the wrath of God and the devil by making sure they have enough macaroni and cheese. But all jokes aside, the focus for faith and discipleship in this scenario, stockpiling, preparing for the end, it becomes all about playing into fear and getting people to focus only on themselves, not other people. It's about making sure you're protected, your soul, your people, but not the vulnerable and oppressed that Jesus advocated for and healed. Not the victims of unjust systems that Jesus stood beside and identified with. It's not about valuing the earth as a place God created and called good, so we should take care of it as much as we can. Again, this type of view is missing the point entirely. Dr. Brian Blunt, who taught me the gospel of Mark in seminary, calls Mark an apocalyptic gospel. But he doesn't mean it's a gospel concerned about telling us when the end times would come, how we would know about it. It's a gospel written around a time when things felt very apocalyptic for the faith community in and around Jerusalem. There were a lot of Gentile Christians who were feeling out of place and persecuted by the broader community. The Jewish war was just beginning when zealots were trying to throw off the weight of Roman oppression. Several Messiah figures started popping up. Mark, with his account of Jesus, is trying to quiet all of this. Mark was reminding people what discipleship of Christ was all about, the true meaning of the cross. When we talk about the apocalypse, we talk about a disclosing, an uncovering and revealing, God's specific way of intervening into history and interrupting the powers that are striving against God's will for creation. For Mark, Jesus was that event. Jesus is God's apocalypse made manifest. Jesus ushered in God's realm. So ever since his arrival and his death and his resurrection, we've been living in the end times. Since that is the case, what concerns Mark In other apocalyptic texts, is that we're called to be witnesses to the faith, that we continue to be disciples. We're called to be witnesses to the lordship of Jesus Christ through our words and actions. That is what is most important. We're not called to simply count down and wait around until the end. We're not called to fend for ourselves and stockpile necessary supplies to try and survive, as if we could avoid acts of God. We're called to live out God's will, no matter what catastrophes and apocalypses transpire around us. We're called to usher in God's realm by the way we love and the way we treat one another. We see this reflected in Jesus' conversation with the disciples. Jesus gives them a heads up of what's about to happen. The temple being destroyed, the false messiahs popping up, earthquakes and famines. He goes on to warn them about persecution at the hands of the authorities. Loved ones turning on each other, people fleeing their homes, going into the wilderness. The sun and the moon becoming dark, the stars falling, planets shaking, the human one coming in on a cloud. 
sounds scary. But Jesus doesn't share this with them to scare them or to give them something else to worry about and consume their attention. At the end of chapter 13, Jesus says, Nobody knows when that day or hour will come. Not the angels in heaven, not even the Son. Only the Father knows. So watch out. Stay alert. Three times Jesus tells them, stay alert. Keep watch. In other words, we can't possibly know when something like the end of the world will happen. We don't even know when our own personal ends will come. There's no use in focusing on it or trying to calculate when it will happen. The only thing we can do is focus on this and this alone, being faithful to Christ, ushering in God's realm by the way we live. We look around at the past few years, things certainly feel apocalyptic. There are wars and rumors of wars, loved ones fighting against each other, the planet and the climate in crisis, illness ravaging the land, tremendous economic disparities. Things feel more fragile than ever. It feels like an ending. But history tells us there will always be tragedy and terrible suffering we have to face. There will always be a little apocalypse we experience and lives that are reaching their conclusions. So should we run away and hide? Do we hoard and stockpile supplies like buckets of food and toilet paper? Do we simply fend for ourselves? No, we witness to the Lordship of Jesus Christ through our words and our actions. We love others, we serve them, We keep our eyes and ears open for the vulnerable in our midst. We stand with them. We practice kindness and compassion. It's easy to get so caught up in the dreadful what if. What if this is the end? What if all we know is crashing down around us? What if it all blows up in our faces? But how often do we consider the hopeful what if? What if it all works out in the end? What if our deepest hopes and longings come to fruition? What if it really is, as Jesus promised and showed us, unexpected resurrection in the midst of death? This is not blind optimism. This is steady hope that keeps its feet planted no matter what we face. This is hope based in the steadfast love of our God. As we approach the start of Advent in a couple weeks, preparing for the arrival of Jesus, and we have Stewardship Sunday next Sunday where we envision what the next year will look like and our hope is embodied through the giving of our time, talents, and finances. It's appropriate we think about how we would want Jesus to find us. When Jesus arrives, what will he find us doing? Waiting around in our bunkers, counting down? Or will we be found keeping watch and staying alert? May the Lord find us all hopeful and walking the path Christ has laid out before us. Amen. Now we take the time to pray together as a community of faith, to name the things to each other and to God that concern us, that give us pause, and also the things that give us joy and we give thanks for. I invite you to take a look at the list on our weekly news flash of who it is we should be in prayer for right now. I also invite you to let us know if you have any concerns Send out an email over HPC News. Send me an email or Joanne. We can get it out for you. Let us know how we can be in prayer for you. But let us now approach God in a time of prayer. Let us pray. Faithful and steadfast God in creation, we experience your beauty. 
and creation, we experience your creativity and diversity. In rocks and trees, the waters and the soil, and the people you made in your image. Amidst all this, we have experienced your love and your sustaining care and provision. So you invite us to extend that love to the world around us, to care for others as deeply as we care for ourselves. So we bring the needs of our world before you now. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the many who do not have enough, enough food to eat or shelter to keep warm, enough employment or money to pay the bills, enough medicine or medical care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also pray for those who have more than enough, but who still struggle to find meaning and purpose in life who indulge in dangerous or self-serving activities to dull the pain and loneliness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, your grace reaches out to all of us. You call us to live as citizens of heaven, working together with one heart and mind. Strengthen us to live in a manner worthy of the good news we have received, offering our lives in service of your kingdom, for the last are first and the first are last, and there is grace enough for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that we offer this prayer, all the prayers of our hearts, and we pray the words that he gave us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Just want to make a quick note that we are not taking up an offering today physically, but we are, of course, accepting offerings online. Or if you have a check you'd like to mail into the church, you are welcome to do so. But keep in mind, next Sunday, November 21st, is Stewardship Sunday. This is the Sunday where we all commit our time and talents and finances to God's mission in this community of faith, in this ministry that we are doing together, that we are leading together. And so I hope you have heard the past few weeks from our committee moderators what the past year has looked like and where they envision us heading into next year. I'm excited. I hope you are too. I hope you'll join us next Sunday. For Stewardship Sunday. I also want to thank you for allowing us to do something a little bit different today, allowing us to change up the scenery, putting up with some different things, uh, but hopefully this was a joy for you. Uh, I hope it is a joy for us where we are out at camp. I'm sure it will be. It's always good when we can be together, especially if we're outside. But friends, keep in mind, there's a lot going on in our world. There's a lot to be concerned and worried about. It's easy to get caught up in that worry. It's easy to get focused on when will the end come? How will we know? What will we do? Friends, in the meantime, focus on this. Being a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ, being someone who loves, being someone who serves, being someone who gives and is kind and is compassionate. That is what Christ asks us to do. That is all we need to worry about. So let us go out and be disciples together. In the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, which will be with you now and always. Amen.